How's it going, guys? My name is Tavarish, and three years ago, I stood next to this very car with a challenge. And the challenge was to take a neglected example of a Toyota Supra and turn it into a fire-breathing, Ferrari-killing monster. And for the most part, we did it in four days. Now, this thing made 120 wheel horsepower when we started, and at the end, it made the better part of 700. But that was many, many moons ago because my friends at Valvoline saw this and they said, yeah, that was good, but we have a better idea. See, they challenged me to find the worst example of a Toyota Supra, and then I would have to rebuild and restore it in a matter of four days. But the kicker is I don't get to keep the car. The car would then have to go to somebody very, very deserving. So in the last episode, I found the worst Supra I could. And it looked like this. It has some modifications on it. And those modifications were not um, done well. But now that car looks like this. <laughs> Look at this thing. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not a finished car. For example, there's no engine. There's no transmission. The wheels are wrong. The suspension is wrong and I've never driven it down the street. So we have a lot of work cut out for us in this episode. So grab a drink, get some popcorn, get comfortable because you are gonna join us on an adventure where we take a worthless Toyota Supra and transform it into a priceless one. All right, that was a little cheesy. We gotta get to work. So if you guys are new to my channel, uh, consider subscribing. If you, uh, this is so heavy. This is a 2JZ and it has a fairly large turbo on it. This is what makes time travel possible. And this is what makes a lot of power in these engines. Unfortunately, all this stuff is pretty bad. This is a wiring harness that has gone bad. There are coil packs here that uh, probably are on their last legs. Uh, there's frayed wires here, there's stuff missing. And this engine is gonna need a lot of refurbishment. And we only have four days to do it. I don't feel like rebuilding an engine just to find out that there are some electrical issues. So I have a better idea. And for that idea, I'm gonna have to go handheld. Actually, what I meant to say was voiceover because when I went through the handheld footage, it all looked like this. But here's the rundown of the build. We're gonna take the drivetrain out of my perfectly running white Supra, along with every other component we might need, so we could put it into the right-hand drive car that was just painted by the guys at Allies Auto. And hopefully, it can make some decent power and sing the song of its people. Hopefully. We took off the center console here and um, we found what we thought were cigarettes. It turns out it's not, it's not cigarettes. These are, uh, this helps, this helps. <laughs> that, that's, that's what it is. So it's held perfectly. Yeah. Wow. What's good is that they're not uh, expired. 
So here you go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's it's a New Year's, that's a Christmas present. Still got two years left. <laughs> there, you, there you go. <laughs> Okay, it is a month later, actually uh, more than a month, right? Yeah, but we're still doing it in four days. Just later, later on in- uh... That's not gonna be the title of this video. Um, <laughs> but the Supra is here and now it is fully prepped for this engine to go in. And this engine is the engine from my white Supra, that sad looking thing over there. We did do some modification here and it's mainly right here. This transmission, even though it is a CD009 from a 350 or 370Z, this is actually, for all intents and purposes, a brand new transmission. We also got a brand new bell housing and a brand new clutch, which is a single disc. It's not gonna hold as much power as my twin disc, but it is gonna be very, very daily drivable. Uh, this was done by Granis. And also in the back, this was done by Granis. That is a serial nine shifter, and that is actually gonna shift a lot, lot better than my car. My yeah, car that, is shifting, is not, not good. It, uh, your shifter is vague and confusing, and this is one of the most precise CD09 conversion shifters I've felt. So I'm excited to actually see it in the car with everything f fully bolted up, because it feels really good right now. And then the McLeod single disc is gonna feel kind of like stock, but handle 
the the mid 500s that this engine did so yeah. so uh, this is going to be on pump gas 509 it made and uh, it made 509 with the turbo kind of you know, yeah. singing the song of its people out the side here. So we have to get a new gasket. We actually got a new gasket here. And uh, everything should line up. There might be some lengthening, or not lengthening, but shortening yeah. of the harness. Uh, yeah, because it used to go there. Yeah, it used to go there. And now it needs to go here. So yeah. the length may be close, but I'll basically have to unloom it and kind of retrain the wires to go in the right direction. Uh, we got our power steering lines kind of started in. You got the AC lines. We were trying to get everything prepped in there. Yeah, so the AC lines are uh, ran. I made sure that everything was clean. Uh, we cleaned them up because they were just corroded and uh, I put some new loom on it. Uh, I also put some DEI heat wrap over there because- well, Tavaris tape. It's, that's not Tavaris tape. Tavaris tape is gold. Um, I did put some heat wrap over there just because these engines do make a lot of heat. Um, underneath, I'm not too concerned because there is uh, a bunch of what looks like a uh, bed liner under there, so it's it's totally okay. We have this harness ran. Uh, when the body shop did all their work, they actually left out the harness, so we put that in. But I wanted to give a special shout out, and I wanted to talk about the sponsor of this series, and that is Valvoline. Now, I've been working with Valvoline for a little while, but they have been just instrumental, especially in this build, but in all my builds, because I've been using their oils. Their oils are awesome, their fluids are awesome, and I'm really excited to use this because like this is as like as close to a game changer as possible as you can get so normally you have to fight with uh transfer tubes and pumps or like you have the plastic bottle and you can almost fit it in to fill a real rear differential up mm -hmm. this you kind of can fold and do what you need yeah. to and you can get all the fluid out of it so so what we're going to do i'm going to show you outside the car so um there's not a ton of room here because the cd009 is actually kind of big for the trans tunnel right there so we have to fill this and this is the fill plug right here and conventionally you can't put like a big bottle in here so you'd need like a fluid transfer pump or something like that but with this you just go whoop and you just squeeze the bottle and it all goes in and it's super clean and it's super fast so we have a bunch of these this is the correct weight for the transmission we have some extended protection this is their new motor oil so this is a fully synthetic oil and this is going to be really good for something as high performance as this and then we have some grease we have synthetic grease and we have some brake fluid because this is getting bigger brakes we're getting the tt brakes i think they're down here these were the original brakes from when i got my white car and well they're not original to the car they were still aftermarket or modified oem and we have some brake rotors that are drilled and slotted so i am super excited i think right now we just need to get a ton of work done actually i missed something i missed something really big uh is it on the inside before we get to any time lapses or work done let me take you for a little tour of the inside of this car now the guys at e3 customs you saw we took out the dashboard and the carpet and everything but take a look at what they did. Now I don't have the seats in and I don't have the center console in, but here. Oh yeah. So this is a completely custom dashboard. They wrapped it in leather. They wrapped the door panels in leather and everything here is just custom made. We have Alcantara inserts there. We have a custom stitch with a very similar color to what my McLaren interior was. And I I love this. Like this is so cool because it combines some Alcantara right here. And this is actually functional because you don't want to have any glare. You want to have actually uh, something that's not gloss. So this is a functional Alcantara binnacle. And then that goes into the center console. We have some more Alcantara underneath there. And then up here, that may not look like much, but that is a custom made piece. Because as you remember, there was no airbag, uh, actually there was no airbag in this car, but that's supposed to be a glove box and that part is super hard to find. I mean, it's discontinued, you can't find it almost anywhere in the world. But E3 Customs, they made that piece out of ABS and they wrapped it and it's it looks just like OEM, especially with the padding that they have on there and it's gonna stay on there forever. Now. We also did, I'm not sure if you can see this, but we did an Alcantara headliner and nope, you absolutely cannot see it. But when we it's get out into, <laughs> yeah, it's a blur, but you can see this is 
just really high quality Alcantara, the same kind that we have in my McLaren. Custom and carpet. And that custom carpet. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So they came and cut everything. Right now, they have a section of mats, essentially, and they did contrast stitching there. So it just looks super high end now. Uh, and they did this on the car. Look at that. And look at that door panel. That door panel looks looks like it belongs in a car that is from this year, not a, not nearly 30 years ago. And we still have some work to do back here. We have to just fill out the trunk area. We have to do some uh, work with the fuel pump, but that's not too bad. Just, oh, this is gonna look fantastic, especially with those seats in it. But I think now we can probably get to the lot, lots of work. We gotta get an engine in and connect a whole lot of things and then fill it with lots of fluids and start it, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is gonna be... This is gonna be fun. All right, so now the engine is in and it's looking, well, it's looking like it's in its home. Um, we actually had to do a lot of work off camera because it turns out when you wanna do things right, it takes a little bit of time. When you do a conversion like this, you have to switch things from the left to the right and not everything fits. So I wanted to make sure that we had everything sort of in its place. So I made a little bracket for the boost controller solenoid here, made sure that all the lines went to their respective homes and I zip tied everything. This is looking good, it's not going anywhere. And we made sure that we got all the grounds connected, we chased all the threads for the grounds, and then we connected everything as per OEM. Well, not OEM, but maybe even better than OEM, but definitely a good, good custom. Now, um, what do you think of this car so far? It's coming in together really nice. And it's one of those things where we're going to do an hour, two hours worth of work and you're not gonna see anything because we're doing the insane attention to detail that just is going to make it perfect. And it's a little bittersweet because we're using a certain car as a parts car. <laughs> I'm so sorry, baby. But we're getting this through like step by step, just making everything absolutely perfect and it, it's exciting to get it to come back to life because we found some of the problems that happened in car track like the turbo trying to yeet itself off the exhaust manifold yeah and we, uh, uh, <laughs> we actually fixed that here uh, i got some stainless steel hardware these are m10 i got a uh, vibrant gasket and not uh, a really cheap multi-layer gasket that came with the kit so that shouldn't blow out this should be very very good uh, made sure all the turbo bolts were nice and tight the turbo spins very freely and uh everything is in its place uh even though this is a little bit more crowded because the steering shaft is right there so we had to make some clearances for the wastegate dump tube there and i mean it it all works as long as the engine doesn't shift too much but i don't think it should uh over here we got a new blow off valve we did that get was a new one yeah we, we did. had planned to use your gretty mm -hmm. but unfortunately the only gretty flanges we had to recycle were made of the worst 
metal I have ever attempted to weld. So in the sake of time, you handed me the tile you bought for yours. Yeah, so, so if you guys don't know what a tile blow-off <laughs> valve is, it's this guy right here. And uh, this is kind of like a stealth install. This is right off of the uh, throttle body. And, um, well, this is going to make a lot of choo-choo noises. This is this is really kind of like the big boy blow-off valve that you want. And you want it as close to right here as possible because when the throttle plate shuts, that's where uh, essentially the shock wave, the, uh, the energy goes, and then it has to be released somewhere. So it just goes, like, make a little 90 and comes out here, and it's going to make a lot of noise. And what's really cool over here is that in my car... Everything was obscured by the brake and the uh, the clutch stuff, but now that we don't have any of that here, we can actually see what the fuel pressure is. Um, well, you know, that, actually, is this is that just dirty or? Ah, eh, whatever. It's fine. You can see what the fuel pressure is. Now this doesn't have any covers on it because Jack was. You weren't ready for that, were you? I was not ready for that. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, Jack Jack was uh, checking his phone, but also he was a busy boy. And yeah. check this guy out. So we have a satin black, and Jack did some very nice uh, pinstriping there. So you've you've done pinstriping before, right? A little bit, not much, but this this came out pretty good. I was I was happy with it. Yeah, I so. think this is going to be very uh, clean looking on this car, especially yeah. when we get everything together and it's not like a rat's nest like it is now. Uh, Jack also did some work over here because we are fitting up our twin turbo brakes and. For those of you wondering how you do twin turbo brakes on a non-turbo car, you have to cut. Pause. You have to cut the brake shield, and we still might need to cut a little bit off this, but uh, this protruded out this much. So in order for the brake rotor not to hit, just cut this off and you'll be good to go. Everything should bolt right up because the hubs are exactly the same, and the same thing goes in the back. Now, after we do that, we are going to put some tires and wheels on the car to measure sort of the offset and everything. I think we should be good to go there, but who knows? I mean, I might need to get some last minute wheels or just a last minute custom set of wheels. But I can't wait for you guys to see all of that. Um, right now, we need to get this engine running, right? Yeah, we're, we're close, but far. It is nice that we have some help today, you know, that we've got a jack of all trades. That's me. I'm Jack. And we have our Valvoline fluids that we are going to be putting in right now. Uh, and after that, we're going to do exhaust and then see if this thing fires up and sings us the song of its people. Is it going to fire up? Absolutely. I mean, we've only changed everything into a different chassis, so it, it should work. It, it worked well the last time we did yeah. it. And yeah. now it'll work a lot better because we fixed what went wrong. Okay. I mean, we should still cross our fingers, though. It'll work. We're good. Stop it. No. No. I'm crossing my fingers. No, that's bad luck. I'm crossing my fingers. Bad luck. It's not bad luck. Bad luck. another car. Oh, she, she's alive! <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. God. I didn't believe you hanging. All right. That way. Woo! <laughs> Jack. Uh. Awesome. So. <laughs> oh, we can let it run, right? Yeah, we can let it run. Should be okay. We can close that off so it goes up in the overflow. Yep. Yeah. And we did vacuum bleed this entire system, so this system should be good as far as cooling. Um, you need to see that it goes into the overflow okay. The turbo's no longer leaking a ton of air. Oh, no. Sounds good. 
what's nice is you did get the good a good spring on that. That didn't open prematurely. Yeah. So, well, hopefully it opens under boost. Too cold. Yeah, it does its little two-step thing. <laughs> this thing is now running, and I am I am really excited. No, no active leaks coming from anywhere. This is like our car. Yeah. So now, all it's got to do is put the whole car back together. This car is quite possibly the best looking Supra I have ever seen. Certainly the best looking car I've made in quite a long time. And that is even considering the McLaren up there. I am so proud of the work everybody has done on this. I'm so proud of Valvoline for sponsoring the build. Uh, I'm so proud of Color Recon for getting all this paint work done. Corsa Forged wheels with BC coilovers. We have Jared, we have Jack working on the car. It really is a village effort to put this car all together. And I have to thank everybody for getting this together. But one person in particular, I want to thank is my friend Rex. Now, you guys will know Rex as my detailer, uh, but what you might not know is that he's actually one of my best friends. Uh, he's been there when uh, my life took a turn. Uh, he's been there when we've had good times, and he is 
one of the most chill guys and one of the most understanding people I've ever met. I mean, this is a guy that would give you the shirt off his back. This is a guy who came from nothing. I mean, he came from the Philippines. He was homeless for a while when he was living in California, and now he runs his own business. He always has his hand in something that makes the world a better place, and he always wants to help people, and he never asks for anything in return. So I think that we're gonna give him this car today. And uh, I might get a little bit emotional. I know uh, Jack is back there. We're actually uh, uh, also doing a simultaneous SEMA build on the Ferrari back there. Uh, Jack's gonna be here and uh, we might get a little emotional too because uh, this has been a build more than a year in the making. And from the beginning, I thought we should give this thing to Rex and we should build it and build it right. That's why I took everything from my car that I knew that worked and we put it on this car. Rex is actually out getting a haircut right now, but when he comes back, I'm gonna have him clean the car and wash it. And I'm gonna say, well, we need to get this done for the video or, or whatever. And then I'm gonna present him with the keys and the title so he can have his very own Toyota Supra. He's always wanted one of these. This is a dream car for him, but he can never afford it. And today we're gonna make that dream a reality. Take a look at this car. If you would have seen this car a year or a year and a half ago, it would have been completely different. You probably would have thought that it's not even the same car, but this looks amazing. I mean, we have the RSP paint, Corsa Forge wheels, bigger brakes, better tires, 2JZ GTE under the hood, VVTi, making somewhere north of 700 horsepower. And look at that interior. <sighs> Oh my goodness, dude. dude well, I got, a, I got a crowd here. <laughs> um, these seats, however, they're not exactly the most form-fitting to me. Uh, they are a little bit, eh, let's just say, for a smaller person. Would you say that's correct, Jack? My hips barely fit in there, and I'm not that big, so yeah. <laughs> yeah probably a little bit smaller of a person than, you know, like... 5'8". Rex, you want to try this out? This won't help too. It, it, it won't. It won't help. No, <laughs> that won't help. Uh, Rex, you want to you want to try out? Yeah, just. You can have my donuts. Bite. You're welcome. <laughs> I know. So I want to see if these uh, Sparkos fit at least some sort of human. This, oh yeah, I fit. You fit? Yeah. Can I have it? Dude. So. This fits you. This fit. This, <laughs> it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, like, sure, doesn't it fit him? This is badass. So, uh, Rex, I've been working on my Tagalog. Uh huh. Can you tell me if something's like uh, wrong or right if I say it? Ito ang iyong sasakyan. What does that mean? No. What does that mean? 
It's your car. Uh huh. No. We built this for you, dude. No way, yep. bro. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's yours. No way, bro. <laughs> we knew from the beginning that we wanted to get you something really special, and this whole build was for you. I'm like talking crap about him the whole time putting <laughs> the shit in the thing, bro. No way. Yeah. Dude, you've been one of my best friends. You've been there for No, bro, this is everything. too much. No, I... it's yours. No one ever gave me anything, ever. Yeah. No, no bro, it still hasn't sunk in. Yeah. Well, it's, it's yours to enjoy. We need to do a few more things, you know, uh, put some odds and ends on it. And, uh, and they know, joked around and said, can I have it? That's why I didn't answer for that reason. I don't deserve something this good, man. Yeah, yeah, you do. You, you've been, oh you've been one of my best Thank friends. Thank you and, so much. Yeah. Really, bro? Absolutely. Oh my god, dude, you guys are f awesome. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's f wild, dude. Yeah. What the? F yeah. Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so first shakedown drive <laughs> of this uh, Toyota Supra. Um, so I I don't really know how this is gonna drive. Uh, I I think hey. it's probably gonna be okay. It sounds really good already, so I'm I'm super stoked, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this so, thing sounds awesome. So it has a brand new clutch in it. So you definitely don't want to like you want you want to take it easy. You know the first All like right. 500 miles or so. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Holy sh I'm sorry for the lag. Oh no, 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 you're good. This is freaking badass, yo! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Holy crap, dude! Oh. This is freaking awesome, bro! <laughs> That was like half throttle. Really? Yeah. Dude, it sounds so nice, guys. Oh, holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I mean, I've ridden in a lot of your cars, man. This is <laughs> this is definitely the sketchiest one and the <laughs> nicest sounding one, dude. Holy crap. My heart, bro. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, dude. I love it, but. <laughs> I did a oh sh yeah, no! Oh, <laughs> this is wild. Oh, dude! Holy crap, bro! <laughs> oh my goodness! This is so fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad you like this. Thanks, man. I don't think I could handle the power though. Oh, of course you can. This, this is really awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, there's a really cool thing that uh, if you just rev it really hard, uh, it does this. Holy sh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. I live in a retirement community, so. Well, you can wake them up. Yeah. At five in the morning. <laughs> That's what time I get up to go to work. I am. I am so glad you like this car. Dude, I love it, man. I yeah. really, 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 really love it, and I really appreciate you giving me this car. Yeah. Uh, so, um, this is probably the best gift I've ever had. So, and my birthday is on Sunday. Good, good. Um, do you mind if we take this to SEMA? Then why not? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, so this is this is this is that's like two birds in one bullet. Like, I've always <laughs> wanted to bring my own car to SEMA. I mean, I didn't build it, but <laughs> you you cleaned it. <laughs> I cleaned you, it. You specced it. And That's the craziest part. Like I had no clue, bro. Yeah. I really had no clue that you were gonna give me the car. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm so, I'm dude, so glad, dude. I'm so, man, so it's glad. wild. Oh, thank you, thank you for being a good friend, man. No, like you, it, it means, it means more, you have, more to me than you ever know. You didn't have to give me a car. I mean, you guys are awesome. I have awesome friends. So, so to everybody that said I'll never make it, man, my <laughs> homie gave me a Supra. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So now we gotta we gotta load this car up and uh, head to SEMA, um, uh -huh. where this car will be displayed 
uh, in the Rag Company booth, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, this was a big, big build. Um, I'm glad that the car went to you. I'm glad that we finished this because this is like almost two years. I feel bad for Jack because I was giving him crap about the car when he was working on it. Not knowing that it was going to come to me. So uh -huh. Jack, I'm sorry. I appreciate you working on this. Um, to everybody that worked on it, um, Jared, Juan, um, mm -hmm. Derek from Draza. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys. Freddy, thank you so much, bro. I love you, man. Thank yes. you, thank you, love thank you. Too, you. Man. Thank right. you. So uh, to every one of you that uh, that want a Supra, um, it's definitely doable. It's definitely uh, something that you can do in your garage. It's just gonna, just going to take a long time. You just got to find a Freddy. You just got to find, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to find a lot, a lot of people. Uh, so until next time, it's me reminding you that on cars like this amazing Supra, you guys should always build them better. And to do that, you should wrench every day. Yeah. All right. We got to. We Thank gotta, you. We got to drive. All right. Yeah, for sure. We got to drive. <laughs>